Hello and welcome to the Facebook worship service of the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church of North Fort Myers for May the 23rd, 2021. This is Pentecost weekend. I am Pastor Tom and Pastor Leah will be joining us. In-person worship has resumed on Saturdays at 4.45 p.m. and Sundays at 11. All of our services are indoors now. A reservation is still requested. Uh, call the church office by Thursday. Masks are optional if you are vaccinated. We are not yet singing live. Sunday, uh, summer office hours, summer office hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 2. The church office is closed on Friday. Pastor Tom, I am always available for you 24-7. You have my phone numbers and my email address. So the church office, however, is closed on Friday. All Souls Episcopal Community Outreach continues with their Tuesday volunteers, their collection of pill bottles and hygiene items. Thank you for the toothbrushes and the toothpaste. We much, very much appreciate that. Um, other items are always needed, and we appreciate your support of this ministry. I continue my pastor's Bible study on Wednesday nights through Zoom. We meet at 7 o'clock. We're finishing the Gospel of Mark, and we will be starting a new study on June the 2nd using the book, Who is This Man? by John Ortberg. I encourage you to purchase the book and then call the church office to sign up for that study. We do have a reopening plan, and you'll notice that if you're in worship this weekend, uh, we will have increased seating. Uh, masks will be optional. There will be not yet live singing. On, in June, we'll have some soloists and vaccinated persons singing. And then in July, we will begin congregational singing with masks. In August, then without masks. And we hope that by September, we'll all be back to our pre-COVID worship routine. Uh, if the CDC changes guidance and the situation changes, of course, this timeline will change. We do have the opportunity to text to give. To, you can text the number you can text to the number 40101, the message, Good Shepherd UMC, and you will receive a link from the My Well Giving portal, which will send you to um, the Good Shepherd Giving Opportunity, the Giving Portal, and you can sign up your information there and make a gift to the church through the My Well Giving application. The COVID-19 vaccinations, we want to encourage everyone to be vaccinated as soon as possible. The, all the vaccines are safe and effective. Still here in Lee County, we are a high infection area. Local hospitals are still seeing a very steady and high rate of COVID infections. Uh, the hospital is reporting that their testing indicates a 12.5% infection rate, and 13 folks did pass away last week. The vaccination rate, however, has increased to nearly 40%, and even people as young as 12 years old can now receive uh, COVID vaccination. So we encourage you to be vaccinated. We have a weekly e-newsletter, e which is the most up-to-date information, and it can be delivered directly to your inbox every Wednesday. So we invite you to make sure that the church has your email address, and we will get that information right out to you. Otherwise, on the internet, we do have a website for the Good Shepherd UMC dot Org. We also are on Facebook page at goodshepherdumc.org and on a YouTube channel called Good Shepherd UMC NFM. Across all these platforms, you will receive the worship service and uh, as up-to-date information as we possibly can provide. I invite Pastor Leah to come now and offer us words of welcome and a very important scripture lesson for us all on Pentecost. Welcome to this service on Pentecost Sunday. 
We are so glad that you are with us. And may the Holy Spirit fill your minds and your hearts as we worship the Lord together. The Word of God is found in Acts 2, 1 through 12. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seems to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they ask, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hear them in our own native language? Persians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Philria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, where we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd now like to offer a wonderful prayer for us to all invite the Holy Spirit into our presence, especially at this time. Let us invite the Holy Spirit. O oh God, the Holy Spirit, come to us and among us. Come as the wind and cleanse us. Come as the fire and burn within us. Come as the dew and refresh us. Convict, convert, and consecrate many hearts and lives to your great good and to thy greater glory. All this we ask for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. We have a beautiful special music to now offer for Pentecost, every time I feel the Spirit. in my 
We come to our time of joys and concerns that we receive from the information that the church receives on yellow cards and through uh, messages. These are our special concerns this week. Linda Dixon has been in Cape Coral Hospital since uh, last weekend, and um, she was having very bad migraines and high blood pressure. We pray for her recovery. Alice Green asked for prayers for Ray King's nephew, Howie, who is undergoing a procedure this week. Marjorie Smith would like prayers for her close friend, Jeanette Kunkelman, who's been diagnosed with stage one breast cancer. We've learned that Mabel Small, who was a member of our church who lived at Calusa Harbor, passed away earlier this year. We were just now notified of that. We have also learned after checking with Calusa that Mary Phillips has moved north to be with family permanently. Our pianist, Christy Kohler, is having some side effects of her vaccination, and we want to pray for her comfort and strength. We have a joy. Judy Stevenson has seen a doctor and uh, for her annual examination, and she is found to still be cancer-free. And Betty Rossi um, is still in Hope Hospice on Diplomat, and the family is also now seeking a longer-term care facility placement for her. We want to lift these and many others up in our prayers now. We invite you to begin a prayer time with a very beautiful little prayer course that we all enjoy so much and is especially appropriate on Pentecost, Spirit of the Living God. I invite you to sing along with me now as we prepare our hearts for worship. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. God of wind and flame, blow now into our lives. Ignite the fire of hope. Fan the flames of possibility. Transform us into a people who share your love with a world who is in pain. A people who proclaim your hope into a world that is awash in suffering. A people who live as though the world can be changed into your kingdom that is to come. Baptizing God, who calls us to be a baptizing community, you speak to us in all the languages of all your people from all over the world. You speak all the words in all the ways that we can hear. Open our ears, open our hearts to listen. Speak to us in the language that we need to hear today. Hear us in the languages that we speak. Gracious God, hear our songs of thanks and praise for your presence in our lives. You sing the notes of joy with us. You join us in the closing beats of our lives. We give thanks for this day and the many blessings that we have received. Hear now our prayers of joy and thanksgiving 
from the depths of our hearts. We also know, God of life, that you also speak the languages of pain, of sorrow, of fear, of despair. Hear all your children who speak, who wail, who whisper in these languages this day. For those who find themselves in hospital beds or waiting anxiously beside those beds, those who gather to say farewell to one who is traveling or to one who is moving. Of those who gather at graveside to say their longer farewell. Those who worry about where the next meal or the next rent check will come from. Those who live in places where peace it's just a word, a faint hope, or a distant dream. May all those whose language is interrupted by pain hear you lamenting with them. Hear now these prayers. God of Pentecost, God who speaks with many tongues, God, fill us with your spirit this and every morning. Hear the prayers we share using many different languages. We pray in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the one we call Christ, whose life, death, and resurrection show us the path to your kingdom. We pray as people of the Spirit, who lights our fires, who fills our lungs with air, who blows us out into the world to live and serve. Hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to say together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We would invite you to remember to provide your offerings to the church. You may do so in person, in worship services when we're gathered, you may mail them to the church through the postal service. You can use your online banking opportunities. You can also use the My Well Giving Portal, which is found at mywell.org slash give slash good shepherd UMC. Let us now receive this lovely offering of music, Spirit Song.
Our scripture lesson today comes again from the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, verses 26 and 27, and then continuing into the 16th chapter, beginning with the second part of verse 4 through verse 15. Let us hear God's word. Jesus is speaking to us, and Jesus says, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this, so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer, and about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So today's sermon is entitled, Going and Coming. Going and Coming. Pentecost marks the birthday of the church. Jesus initiated the forming of the church as he called the first disciples. At Pentecost, the disciples were transformed by the coming of the Holy Spirit from a band of friends of Jesus into a community of faith, the body of Christ that lived uniquely devoted, loving, servant lives after the example of the teaching of Christ enabled by the Holy Spirit. That is the church. They were transformed into dynamic ambassadors, missionaries, and martyrs who shared their experiences of Jesus across the world to all people. Jesus has called each of us to be a follower, to be part of his church, to receive this Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be in ministry in the world today. We are transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are empowered to share our faith experiences with all people. That is what Acts 2 makes so clear. But this week, in our scripture lesson, we're going back a little bit in the chronology of the Gospels to the weeks before Pentecost. Pentecost means 50. So Pentecost occurred 50 days after 
Easter, and today's scripture lesson was the days just before Jesus was arrested. Jesus tells the disciples about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And in this scripture, we can see how the Holy Spirit is connected to Jesus. It's a very important connection to recognize and to embrace. Jesus, in the Gospel of John, is the Word of God made flesh. John says that at that very statement is at the beginning of his Gospel. Jesus is the incarnation of God. In other words, God made flesh. God that looks like us. Jesus has been telling the disciples in these chapters, these closing chapters of the gospel, throughout the farewell discourses, which is the Last Supper meal, that he is going to be arrested, put on trial, killed, and resurrected. An obvious question is, what's next? Who will lead the disciples? How will we continue? How will they continue to follow Jesus? Because you see, they've been relying upon Jesus with them, God with them to guide them. And we know in reading the scriptures that the disciples don't often get it. They don't understand on their own. So they're anxious, they're concerned, they're upset, they're worried in the midst of their growing grief at the loss of their beloved leader, Jesus. So Jesus tells them that he is going to send them an advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, to continue to be with them. The Greek word that John uses here for Holy Spirit is paraclete. This has nothing to do with a small bird or with athletic shoes. It is actually a legal term similar to the word advocate, or representative, or ambassador. Jesus is sending us legal representation because he knows we will be assaulted for living unique and transformed lives different from the world. Faithful disciples will be misunderstood, opposed, persecuted, reviled, and abused by the world. Disciples will need help to defend themselves and to continue to live the gospel of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is from God in complete unity with Jesus and God in all that the Holy Spirit will empower the disciples, us, them, to do. The Holy Spirit is not a second-class leader or some trainee. The Holy Spirit is a continuation of God's Word, of Jesus' teaching, and a continued presence with all disciples. The Holy Spirit will not change Jesus' teaching. There is absolute unity continuation, consistency with the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and God. Jesus is not abandoning the disciples despite his coming death and resurrection. Jesus is leaving them because there are consequences to our sin, even for Jesus. The only repayment capable of settling the debt of our rejection of God because of our pride, our arrogance, our selfishness, is the sacrifice of God's own Son, Jesus. That must be made. The only proof that God has paid the debt and that God has now defeated sin and has power to change our lives is the resurrection. That is the point. 
The only assurance that our sin is defeated is that Jesus now returns to heaven, thus making us, the followers of Jesus, the children of Jesus, his disciples, heirs of the kingdom of God. Jesus must return to heaven to be with God for our benefit. However, Jesus loves us so much and knows us so well that he knows that we need a continual guide. And so the Holy Spirit is sent to be with us. Jesus also knows that as a human, he can only be in one place at one time. The Holy Spirit can be in all places at all times. And since the church is to expand, to go global, then all the branch offices need to have a factory-trained representative. So the Holy Spirit is sent from Jesus to lead us, the church, all over the world in all the languages that we can all understand. Now, you say, we do have the scriptures, and that's true. And perhaps if we read all the instruction manual, we could maybe figure this all out on our own. But Jesus knows all too well that we can't. The evidence that if we could, then the religious authorities in Jesus' time 2,000 years ago, would certainly have recognized him. Because these religious leaders were very well read, they were literate in their scriptures, they were highly studied, but yet they didn't recognize Jesus. They had a very burdened and limited view of Messiah to one very particular model called the warrior king, and they could not recognize Jesus coming to them as a servant savior. So after 2,000 years, why can't the church decide once and for all what the scriptures actually really mean? Well, I think it's because we're not as smart as we like to think we are. Just as in 2,000 years ago, we still can't understand with the perfect wisdom of God, so we get confused, we get lost, we are blind, or at least we're myopic in our understandings of the scriptures. Each and every one of us have agendas, and we can only see what we want to see. That is still true. So Jesus knew that there would be situations, issues, concerns that would arise that would need further direction for all of us. And the Holy Spirit would provide advocacy to the community of faith. That advocacy will never contradict the previous words of Jesus. We must always remember that the Holy Spirit is consistent at all times and in all declarations with God and with Jesus. It is us who only understand in part. So brothers and sisters, let us seek the Holy Spirit. Let us reach out and embrace the Holy Spirit. Let us follow the Holy Spirit because it is through the Holy Spirit that we come to know Jesus and live as a child of God in the world today. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
There's a scripture in John 14, 26. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Amen. Spirit of the living God, for fresh upon us. Spirit of the living God, for fresh among us. Fill us with the power of God to be faithful disciples, to witness to the word of God, to witness to the power of God, to do ministry in the power of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, we ask. Amen. My brothers and sisters, receive the blessing of God. May the love of God, our Creator, the grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the power of the Holy Spirit be upon you today and always. Receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom. Go now in peace.